Hi everyone, I'm Catherine, the artist behind Bigelow Fine Arts. Come color along with me on this page of bottles of From Worlds of Wonder. This is a great page. Each little bottle works up quickly, but still has enough space to add in little shadows and detailing. This set of videos has been kept very close to my normal speed, only sped up just a touch, especially the background. But if there's lots of interest in more beginner style, slower color alongs, I can make more. On to the next bottle, and yes, I am starting with the terracotta pot. A base layer of burnt ochre as usual. I am coming in with some sanguine on top where the shadows would be and blending that almost all the way across. I still want to keep the right side quite light as that will be where the sun is hitting and is acting as my highlight. With the terracotta, I darken up the shadows and blend that about halfway across. I want to have a very light layer at the halfway point and several layers at the darkest point of the shadow. This gives a curved appearance. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps keep you informed of when I post new videos as well as join in on the color alongs. I have palettes and timestamps in a Patreon post, so go check that out if you want the whole list of colors. Subscribing is the best way to keep up with the color alongs. I finish darkening up the shadows with sepia, keeping it to the darkest part. I blend the shadowed area with a little more sanguine and touch up the shadows with a little more terracotta. I blend the highlight with ivory to keep it light. Onto the trunk and branches. I come in with a light layer of bister over all the tree branches. And like I have been doing with other wooden things, I come in with a light layer of walnut brown over the bister. I also add in hints of shadows. I decided to blend the two together with some warm gray too. Once 
When I first started this page, I decided I wanted at least one of the houses to have a slate roof, and this house seemed to have the best example of roof that would work for slate. So, to make slate, I am coming in with a base layer of cold grey 3 over all the roof tiles. Cold grey has some blue in it, putting it on the cooler side of the colour spectrum, while warm grey has some red in it, making it warmer. I come in with the cold grey 5 and begin adding in shadows at the top of each tile where they would be darkest. The bottom of the tile is most exposed to the sun and elements and that would make them look lighter there. This takes a while as I am working slowly and carefully. I want to make sure I am keeping my colours in the lines, although I don't stress that too much, but really, I want to make sure I am making a smooth gradient in my colour, which is more important. I want the top to be the darkest and I want to really lighten that pressure just about the halfway point of the tile. And I'm doing each tile individually so they all look a little unique, although I get a little lazy at the last row and work them all up together. So it kind of doesn't matter in the end which way to work it up. For the shadows at the top of each tile, I am coming in with the cold grey 6 and darkening up the top of the tile.
I now want to blend everything together and get another layer down on the highlight as I don't want it to get too light. I add in a light layer over the entire set of tiles with the cold gray three, mindful to not darken up the highlight too much. And to darken up the shadows even more, I am coming in with black, just at the very top of the tile. This increases the contrast between the highlight and the shadow and makes the tiles look much more interesting. Contrast is key. I blend in the black with a little more cold gray 5 and I blend that down a little to make sure the gradient is smooth. If you've made it this far and have enjoyed coloring along with me or just watching this bottle come to life, I'd appreciate it if you give me a like and subscribe to stay informed of when I post more videos. It really helps me out. Check out my blog posts on Patreon. I have a short write-up, my palettes, and a list of chapter breaks and they're available for everyone. If you have any questions or page requests, please leave them below or reach out to me on social media. I put a list of chapter breaks in the show notes as well as a list of equipment I like to use. If you use any of my affiliate links, it really helps me out without costing you a thing. I post three times during the week and subscribing is the best way to stay in the loop. The front step, I'm coming in with the cold gray three and giving it a base layer. I just figured I'd make it look like concrete. And I go ahead and add in a layer on the sides of the roofs as they will also be slate, just from the side. For the little pipe, I fill that in with cold gray 5. And I add in a layer on the sides of the roof tiles, and then I add in some to at the base of the concrete step mostly around the greenery to show them casting a bit of a shadow. I darken up that shadow with some cold gray 6, keeping it to the bottom and just around the leaves. I blend it all together with more gray three over everything.
On to the greenery. I begin with a layer of grass green on the leaves. I come in with the dark green to add in a little shading down the center vein and a little at the bottom. Then I fill in whatever this spiky plant thing is. I blend it with some leaf green and the greenery is finished. For the tree, I decided on something different, but with the same techniques. I'll have a light, medium, and dark color as well as sepia for shading. I am coming in with a base layer of light magenta over all the foliage. I bring in crimson to work up some of the shadows. I look for the areas where the line art hints at an overlap and put in a shadow there. I also add one to the base of the foliage where the trunk is entering. I use the manganese violet as my darkest color and put that at the deepest part of the shadows and blend it into the crimson. I blend everything together with more light magenta. Back to the roofing and I come in with gray six to fill in some of the details I didn't do earlier. I fill in the ridge and the eaves. For the eaves, I create a gradient to show the shadow of the overhang. Add in some gray five to blend it down a little more. Then I deepen up the shadows with black, only at the top where they would be darkest. I blend everything together with some gray three.
I decided to add in some wood detail, so I am coming in with the walnut brown to work up these wooden things under the overhang. I add in some sepia to make them look like there is a shadow at the top, where they would be under the overhang. The little side roof has been neglected, but it is time to fix that. I am coming in with some gray six and creating a gradient with the center bottom the lightest. I blend in some gray three on top to keep the gradient, giving the small roof some visual interest. I guess there's no reason for the darker part on the slant of the roof, but why not? Looks nice. Maybe it's a round roof. And finally, a cork. I come in with a base layer of bister over the whole cork. After that, I come in with the walnut brown and begin defining the shadows. They will be on the sides and will give the effect of a cylindrical cork. I darken up the shadows with some sepia, at the edges and at the top part where the cork is in the bottle. I also fill in the little dots in the cork to make them look like holes a little bit. Finally, I blend all that together with more bister. Thanks for joining me on this bottle today. Let me know below or on social media if you colored along. I'd love to know how you did. I want to thank you all so much for coming along and joining in with me on this coloring journey. I appreciate all my subscribers and look forward to more of you joining in and coloring along with me. Please like, share, and subscribe to help that happen. Until next time, happy coloring.